Okay, so uh, so hi April, uh, I'm uh, Mr. Alexander, fifth grade guest up, and we Skype all over the world all the time, and I know we're kind of running, not we don't have as much time as I wanted unfortunately, but um, I don't know if you know, but I actually was the, uh, the teacher who got Beagle Freedom Project, now Rescue Freedom Project, um, connected to Skype in the classroom. Um, oh, cool. And um, I was able to uh, take students a couple years back to, hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm trying to record this. That's okay, uh, I'm recording it too, so I can oh, send so it to you. That's fantastic. Thank you. So anyway, so listen, um, I took students with me to the state house to try to get the Beagle Freedom Bill passed a couple years back in Indiana. Didn't work, but it was a great first step. Oh, okay. I remember that. Okay, let me go grab my Beagle. She okay. took off. She's camera oh. shy. Uh -oh. oh my gosh, you have a Beagle? Oh come to the floor. Just make sure you're focused. Yeah. You're not calling out. <laughs> I used to have a baby. I know it's so adopted a baby. It died. I know it's so easy. Oh, why? 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 Um, she might get startled by noises, so, um, real quick, I want to introduce you, April, to a few students, real quick. So, this is Kayla. Hi, Kayla. This is Shayna. And this is Karen. And Charles isn't here. Guys, quiet down, please. Charles isn't here at the moment, but those three plus Charles are studying animal testing for a spring project called Exhibition. Wow. We'll talk. Sit down where they identify a real world issue, animal testing, and they research it and study it and come up with a way that they can take action to make the issue, to help with the issue, right? So they'll come up with some sort of action. And so they're gonna be taking a lot of notes, just like a lot of students will be. And at the end, I'm hoping that they get a chance to at least ask their questions and then at this time, other students will as well. Now, as you know, in my class, you're in one spot, stay in one spot. Sit on the floor or in your seat. Well, let's all sit down either on the floor or in your seat. All right, and everyone else, go to your our spots. And if you are on the floor, of course, you have your notebook. We're going to take some notes. And April, without further ado, we, we love we uh, look forward to hearing all about Rescue Freedom Project and learning all kinds of things. So hopefully, at this time, we'll be able to ask some questions. Of course. So let me get started by telling you about Winnie. Let me turn off my iMessages. So this is Winnie, and we rescued her from animal testing about two years ago. So she's only three years old, and so she spent the first year of her life being tested on in a scientific laboratory. And so you can see she's really little, and then I'll show you her ear tattoo. I, it's very hard to see, but she has a tattoo in her ear that's... Uh, a few numbers long. And so in the laboratory, the dogs are known by these numbers instead of names. And so the first thing we do is when they get out of a lab is we name them because we think it's very important for them to have a name and not be uh, deemed as a scientific subject. So I'm gonna go ahead and set her down because she hates being held, but she'll come back and say goodbye in a little bit, okay? okay. Okay, cool. So, um, we actually just changed our name back to Beagle Freedom Project. Whoa, that's awesome. Yay! Yeah. Come on. Yay! Okay. Well, <laughs> we, like it. we preferred that name, and it just, um, a lot of people know it more. So, we changed back to Beagle Freedom Project. So, how we got started, we got started in 2010 when our president and founder, Shannon Keith, got an email from a laboratory saying they had two beagles that were finished with animal testing and would she be interested in rescuing them? And so she said yes. And so she went to the laboratory and she picked up the two beagles 
and she filmed everything. We watched that video. Yeah. Yeah. And so she filmed it and um, she put it on YouTube and it went viral overnight. And so overnight, the whole world was introduced to animal testing and that they test on beagles as well as, you know, when you think of animal testing, it might just come up as rabbit or mice or rat, but they actually test on beagles as well as cats, other dogs, horses, goats, pigs, ferrets, and rabbits, and all other sorts of animals. We've also rescued fish. So they test on everything. And so with that, um, since 2010, we've rescued over 2,000 animals from scientific research. And we've rescued all different sorts of animals. So again, horses, goats, pigs, everything like that. And um, so I wanted to see, do you guys know what type of tests they do on the animals? Uh, so Kayla uh, uh, and, and Shana and Karen should. Karen, what's one thing that they do to test on the beetles in the laboratory? Really loud. What do they do sometimes? Yes, that's correct. They make them inhale chemicals and toxic substances. You see their effect on the dogs. What else, Kayla? And they also do drug injections into them. They do what? Sorry? Dr drug injections? Yes, they do. And so Winnie actually has a series of tattoos on her stomach. And it's these little dots where they've injected different chemicals into her body to see what happens. And so majority of animal testing isn't for life-saving research. It's not to find um, cures to cancer or other types of diseases. It's to test chemicals and products that are found in cosmetics, makeup, and household products. So they test, uh, they test the animals um, with laundry detergent, uh, soap, shampoo, conditioner, makeup, blush, eyeshadow, lipstick. And so a common test is a skin irritation test where they shave a part of their fur off and they apply either the makeup or the chemical or the soap to see if it's toxic. And so that's another form of test. They do this with the inhalation and they even um, put it in their eyes and in their nose and in their mouth. And so it's really sad that they force these dogs and other animals to ingest these substances. Um, and so what's crazy about that is it doesn't work. So while it might look safe on animals is 92% of tests actually fail when it goes to be tested on a human. And so animal testing. So out for a second. That's a really important statistic. Can you yeah. say it in a little bit slower and then explain what, what that really means? So the 92%. Everyone listen. So it's around, I can get you the actual statistic, but it's around 92% percent. of experiments that pass on animals, they fail on humans. And so what that means is is say if they test a lipstick on a dog's skin and it passes on a human, it's going to probably fail on, sorry, when they test, when they apply the lipstick onto a dog and it passes, it's probably going to fail on a human. So isn't that crazy? So that's why animal testing isn't needed. So and right, so- to that, all that, so 92, so that means all that that suffering that the animal may have gone through, and just, just, because, just because it passed 92% of the time, it doesn't work, it doesn't match up with humans, is what she's saying. And so, is it really that useful. valuable or useful? I don't know. I don't know Correct. That. And so, that's mainly for less cosmetics, but more so for drugs and pharmaceuticals. So, that means they're pushing antibiotics and other forms of medication and pharmaceuticals onto these dogs, but then they're going to fail in humans, which is crazy because they're going to put all those animals through suffering for nothing. And so that's why we exist is to rescue these animals and to help stop animal testing. And so how we help stop animal testing is we pass laws in different states. 
And that way, when the testing is done, we can adopt out the animals to loving homes. And so I guess that's what you guys did. You went to testify in Indiana, was it? So these guys did. These are former students of mine that did. Um, but yeah, so we tried to get, it. we're in Indiana, and try. And students who studied uh, animal testing for exhibition for this project came back. They, uh, for the project, they had to share with the community. We had a state senator come and visit us. Um, yeah. They shared this to the state senator and he said, I would, I would be interested in sponsoring this bill next year. And we thought, oh yeah, whatever. He's just being nice. That's very <laughs> sweet. We said, thank you. That's so sweet of you. But we didn't expect him to follow up. Well, he followed up over the summer with an email and said, Mr. Auslander, if you're still interested, I would like to sponsor this bill. I think it's a good bill. And we, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So we had students come back and visit me over the summer. And then we, we practiced the practice. We went in January to the state house and, and the, the students testified on behalf of the Beagles to try to get this law passed where, just like April said, the law, the law would be that after testing, if they've had injections and stuff, if the dog is really sick, and then the dog would still be put down. But if the dog, after testing and had injections and all that, if the dog is healthy enough, you know, and happy and tails wagging, why put them down when there's a lot of people who would take this dog? So the law, the Beagle Freedom Bill, which is passed in how many states, April? Right, nine. Nine states. Nine states that made this bill a law in the, world? in the country. Nine states that made this bill a law. And it says if an animal is tested on and they're healthy enough for adoption, we should let them be adopted. Instead of just putting them, <laughs> that's what the law says. So it does. That is not a law in Indiana. Now in Indiana, if a scientist has tested on a beagle and the tail is wagging and they're happy and they still almost always put them down anyway, just to be done with the dog. Yeah, and that's really sad. And so I wanted to um, ask you guys if you've ever heard of a product being cruelty free. Do you guys know that term? Yes. yes. Yes, and so what cruelty free means is that product or cosmetic isn't tested on animals. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, we have a little poster here and it has all these companies that test on animals. And so Clorox. Clorox. Yeah, Clorox yes. on animals. So it's a lot of stuff that you would find in your house. So it's going to be toothpaste, laundry detergent, shampoo, conditioner, hairspray. Um, and then cleaning products like Windex. Windex is tested on animals. Even mouthwash, scope is tested on animals. So um, what you can do to help is we have an app on a smartphone. Who all has a cell phone? <laughs> so if you have an iPhone or a smartphone where you can download apps, we created an app that you guys can download and it's called Cruelty Cutter. Write that down, guys. You probably won't be able to access it from school unless it's on Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Is, so it called... Is the app free? Yeah, so it's called Cruelty Cutter, and you can download it. And so it's kind of like a fun game you can do. You can go home, and you can see the products that you might want to see if they were tested on animals or not. And what you can do is you download the app, and then you click scan barcode and what you do is you scan the barcode of the product who knows where the barcodes are well, then when you scan, yeah when you scan a barcode it will tell you instantly if it was tested on animals or not and so it's cool because a lot of brands and companies have started going cruelty free and so just like the other poster all of these brands are actually cruelty free oh where do you find that? Um, oh, wait. Well, I'll hey. send it to you. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Be there to do as often as you want to test on So if you use those products, don't keep it a secret. Share it and tell everybody you know that that's the one you want to think. That's when you use because it's cruelty free, right? Yeah, that's cruelty free. And um, you can find them in a, a special section at a grocery store or Target. Um, who knows the brand Method that's sold at Target? Have you ever seen that? Method. Method, method, okay. Method. Method? 
they're cruelty free. They do a lot of soaps and laundry detergent and all sorts of stuff. So um, method is a good one to know. And then who's into makeup? Me. <laughs> oh my God. Yep. Do you guys know any cruelty free makeup companies? Ben, Carolyn, do you know a cruelty free makeup company? Elf. Elf? Oh, yeah. I use Elf. Elf is cruelty free. Who else knows one? On the shelf. My else? sister used Anyone else? Elf. And a Burt's Bees is cruelty free. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love Burt's Bees. Yeah. That's the chapstick I use. What about, um, let's see. Is Carmen? Mac. Mac isn't cruelty free. They test on animals. Well, wait, is Carmax? Is Carmax? Yeah. Is Bare Minerals? Yeah. Bare Minerals is cruelty free. Uh, yes. That's, that's, that's right. Cover have you heard of the brand Cover Girl? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They actually went cruelty free in the beginning of the year, so they're cruelty free now, which is good. Yay! Now, why do you think they went cruelty free? Because um, we're changing the world. Beagle Freedom Project is changing the world, and we're educating everyone, including kids, grown-ups, adults. We're educating them that animal testing is actually done to beagles. And so um, everyone wants to buy cruelty-free products. And so we're starting to change the world, and brands and companies are starting to listen. And when there's a demand for cruelty-free products, companies will actually stop testing on animals and they'll go cruelty-free. How cool is that? That's a good thing. That's, that's good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you too. so there's a few ways you guys can help educate everyone on going cruelty-free. That way they can stop testing on animals. Is You can tell everyone about the app. Or you can follow us on social media. Do you guys have social media? Yes, I do. I do. Does. <laughs> of course. So you can post on social media. You can find us. We're called Beagle Freedom Project on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. And you can share our stuff and you can tell people in the comments, like, um, you know, you can educate everyone about animal testing. And so I wanted to ask you guys, who has a dog at home? Raise your hand. I do. I do. And then who has a cat? Who has a cat? Yeah, a lot of people do. Okay. Yeah. So this is the best way to get people to go cruelty free is ask them if they have a pet at home. If they have a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a guinea pig. All those animals are used in animal testing. And so what we like to say to people is imagine your dog being tested on and put down at the end of the experiment. I'm sorry, we'll time out for one second. Yeah. I, I'm actually shocked right now because I think five students are having a conversation. So, April, I think you asked a great question, but we got to get ourselves under control and make control of us. Okay. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. So, the best way to ask is so someone. I can only see their forehead, but she has a ponytail on top of her head. What's your name? Um, I'm Kiernan. Kiernan? Yes. So do you have a dog at home? Yes. What's their name? Sadie. Sadie. And what type of dog is she? A uh, Border Collie um, Golden Retriever Mix. Yeah. So what we like to say is, imagine if Sadie was being used in animal testing, and that would be really sad, right? And yeah. so that's how you can emotionally get to people and say, imagine if your dog was being used in animal testing. And so that's why it's important to go cruelty free. So that's how you can ask people if they've heard of cruelty free or animal testing. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, we're gonna start with those who are studying this issue first. Uh, okay. Kayla, you go first. Everyone okay. listen, well, it's their issues, the primary sources. Everyone listen. You should be taking lots of notes. Okay. So my question is, why do uh, scientists test on animals? And so scientists test on animals because it started back in the day when there weren't any alternatives. And so it was important to test on animals back in the day to make sure that products and chemicals and stuff were safe for humans. 
But now that there are humane alternatives, meaning that there are more nicer ways to find out if a chemical is okay for humans, is um, that's advanced technology now. And so that way there are alternatives to testing on animals. And we funded, we gave out special grants like scholarships, we gave out scholarships to scientists that are using different methods. And so one of those methods is called skin on a chip. And so they create little human skin on a chip, just crazy fancy scientific, but then they drop the chemicals on this fake human skin and then they can tell if it's safe or not for humans. So that's a great alternative to use. It's called skin on a chip, huh? Yeah. Uh, so skin on a chip or organ on a chip. So it's technology. It's not really tech. Once you. So it's, it's using technology as opposed to the atom, right? Yeah. So as technology advances, there are a lot more alternatives than testing on animals. <laughs> Does that help? Yeah, yeah thank you. Great. Yeah. So, so animal testing group definitely you want to really research the, the uh, technological alternatives like skin on a yeah. chip, organ on a chip, right? That's fantastic. I, I want to learn more about that too. Old Karen, and updated. So they used to do it, they've always done it, and they, they aren't ready to change. Karen, go ask your question. And then Shana, and then we can open up that. Uh, my question was, how many countries support animal, I mean, are we the only? Are there countries that don't test on animals? There are. That's a very good question. So, India is one country that has banned animal testing completely. Yay! Um, so that's Israel, very cool. Right? Israel? Israel. Israel is another one. So it's India, Israel, and then um, for the European Union, they do not, um, there's, it's very tricky with the European, European Union because they don't test on animals, but they will import, you know, um, products from companies that do test on animals, but there's no testing on animals in those actual countries. But oh. say for England, um, England actually has laboratories where they do tests. So England is excluded in the European Union ban. And England also has um, a commercial breeding facility where they get the dogs. So does anyone know how they get the dogs into the laboratories? Tell us about it. So for these laboratories and experiments to take place is they actually buy these beagles from a commercial breeder. And so since birth, these dogs are forced into crates their whole lives until they are sold into animal testing. And so in these breeding facilities, it's not nice. It's a scientific environment and they, um, the mom and dad beagles are forced to breed puppies after puppies after puppies. And then they're sold to animal testing, which is really, really sad. So England has a bunch of those breeding facilities. Um, Sorry? They sell for a lot of money, don't they? They sell for a lot of money, and that's why um, they don't want to stop animal testing, is because it's a huge profit making industry. Uh, money. Uh, Shane, do you have a question since it's your issue? Go ahead and ask yours, and then we'll, we'll open it up to a few others. We're running short on time. April, if by chance I don't get enough time, can, can I message you questions and you could message us? Yes. Back? So that's what we would do, but really. I say that a lot, but no one actually answers me. <laughs> so, honestly, we're running short on time. If I don't get your question, please send it to me in Canada. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Shana. Uh, why do why don't uh, people stop if they know that animals aren't the same as humans? That's a great question, and we like to broadcast that out on social media all the time. Is why are we still testing on animals when it doesn't even work? as well as it's a form of cruelty and torture to the animals. And so a lot of it has to deal with money because it's a money-making industry. And so um, there's that, but then there's also, you know, the researchers and universities that test on animals, 
they've this is the way they've always done it and so they're stuck in their ways and so they don't want to adapt to a new form of testing <laughs> even just, though it could be cheaper it's and it's better for the animals they're just stuck in their old ways um listen um it is 12 50 so it's just about time for lunch so raise your hand if you have a question you can get answers can you um write it in your notebook and that way the first thing you do when you come back to lunch is you send you message it to me on canvas and i will message it to april i promise i will do that you have to, you have to i know it's 12 50. um guys is this something that that's a little upsetting yeah. Yeah. Real and loud. if we has more time, she could have told you a lot of more stories and more detail. And um, it's very upsetting, but there's something you can do about it. And the great news is CoverGirl. Guys, is that a big company? Yeah. Easy, be, yeah. easy breezy, beautiful cover, cover girl. They change their policy. Yeah. We can make a difference. We like, can do it. Kids can make a difference. Nine states have passed the law, the Beagle Freedom Bill. Like, you guys can make a difference. Real you quick, can. before we get to lunch, go to and the screen can. and take a photo. Yeah. Where are you in California? We're in Los Angeles, but I work remote from Charlotte, North Carolina. What time is it there? It's 12.51. Oh. <laughs> okay. Gather up. Gather up. Come on, guys. Yes, 12.51. Get in there, guys. Come on. Come on, Amelia. Yeah, we know what to do. We've done this a gazillion times. Guys, gather in. Everybody like this. Gather in, gather in, get in there. Come on, guys. I'll go grab the beagle so she's in the photo, too. Uh, what's the name of your What's the name of the beagle? Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Trey, uh, Eli, get over this place first. Picture. I love